everybody. Welcome to Azure Flash News. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Uh, it's going great. Um, I think we we uh, we got to figure out. No, we can't change the name. It's we're too long in the tooth now with the name. But I think we we want to let people know um, we are uh, in the process of kind of changing our format a little bit. So just real quick, let everybody know uh, we're we've decided and and by popular vote, I guess, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> you got to go where you got to go where the people want That's you right. to go. Um, I think we're basically so everybody understands we're, we're the intent is to spend less time focusing on announcements because I think people have quickly realized, hey, everybody can go figure out what announcements are being That's made, right. right? More important, how do I do X yep. or <clears throat> what's the best way to do Y or how have people solved this problem? Right. I think that's really um, what people are interested in. And uh, so that's the direction we're going. Yeah. And, and it's really exciting. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm looking forward to this transition. Um, and uh, as most people know, we've started this journey last week. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but, sorta. <laughs> but we had a little bit of a false step. Uh, pe 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 people that see this after this is recorded maybe may not notice. But we had a little audio problem. We're trying some new stuff, but we, we're back in shape. We're trying again, and but we're going to focus on one topic and focus on demos and really getting deeper in that topic. And so today. We have Abe Prabhati with us. Abe, welcome to the show. Hi guys, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, why don't you? It's a pleasure to be on. Yeah, your... why, why don't you do a quick introduction to yourself? <laughs> yeah, sure. My name is Abe Prabhati, and I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft, based out of Chicago. Hey, great. We're really glad to have you here. And uh, yes. So, well, I tell you what. Um, you know, I think today we're going to talk a little bit about the SQL Server. IaaS extension. So for people who don't know, uh, just a real quick primer. Obviously, IaaS is you know just cert, just virtual machines. We have all kinds of ways to do SQL, and this one is aimed aimed yep. at your virtual machines running your SQL, right, Abe? That's right. So this is a Azure VM extension that you would install on your VMs, which have a SQL Server installed on them, and that kind of opens up a whole lot of possibilities for SQL Server admins in terms of uh, better administration, better visibility, and managing of SQL Servers. Yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit about why we would bother to, um, why, why would a SQL DBA, what, like, what do they get out of having this on their virtual machines? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So the problem that we are trying to solve is a lot of uh, our customers have installed SQL Servers on Azure VMs instead of going the PaaS uh, route, like leveraging the Azure SQL PaaS service. And by doing so, what they're missing out is on a lot of administrative features. For example, uh, doing automatic backups or patching of the SQL servers, or even just visibility. Like uh, recently I had a conversation with a customer who just wanted to know how many SQL servers are running in their environment. And it's a challenge when you have the SQL servers running you know, inside a VM. Yeah, um, hmm. and some of our bigger customers have like hundreds of VMs, and it's really difficult to know like which VM has a SQL Server running on them. So with this agent, once you install it, um, you get a better visibility of all your SQL Servers uh, running in an environment. And uh, actually, the SQL IaaS agent has been out for a while, but what uh, re recently what we have done is. We have enabled an easy button, I would say, uh, a button that you can just click uh, on your Azure portal, and all the VMs that have a SQL Server installed on them uh, will get uh, the extension installed automatically. So that's really a big uh, uh, step over, you know, uh, from a management perspective. Oh, that that's a huge step. I mean, so this takes us from the point where you've got to, <clears throat> excuse me, where you might write a PowerShell script or you might go to the AZ CLI and say, okay, now for every subscription I have in my org, which could be hundreds, if not thousands, I've got to loop through every subscription. I've got to loop through every resource group. I've got to loop through every virtual machine and I've got to try and determine whether or not it's got SQL Server installed on it. And if it does, then I've got to run this age. I mean, so this completely takes all that complexity out of the picture and simply says, look, go to your subscription, click this button, it'll auto identify SQL servers and install this agent that will basically register it as a SQL server um, instance and you get all these extra benefits. I mean, exactly. it's, it's, it's yeah. 
crazy how much easier this is. Exactly, especially with customers which have a lot of uh, VMs having SQL Server installed in them. This is a huge uh, advantage. Yeah. Huge Great. advantage. So we talked about the visibility, which is really important, right? Knowing what you have in your environment is is critical, right? Yep. So, it, But in addition to the visibility of, of simply just seeing these machines as instances that have SQL Server on it, what else what else is a, a benefit of this? Because this isn't necessarily just, and I think people might be concerned that, hey, this is just Microsoft's way of, you know, being big brother and spying on you to see, you know, to make sure your licenses are, that's not what this is about. Yeah, yeah. So we actually explicitly give it in writing that we are not going to use this information to audit your licenses. So awesome. what we are really trying to do is bring up the experience that you get uh, when you install SQL servers in a VM to the same level as a Azure SQL PaaS service. So I'm kind of showing on my screen, but people who are listening yeah. on the radio, uh, the benefits can be kind of looked at in four different categories. One is optimization of cost. So once you install this agent, you can actually uh, look at what kind of addition you are running, like what uh, kind of SQL Server you're running on your VM, and also the kind of licensing you're using. Is it like a pay-as-you-go SQL Server, or is it a are you leveraging Azure Hybrid benefit or a high availability disaster recovery kind of SQL Server? So all those things you can see uh, right on the, the SQL Server, uh, sorry VM, and also yeah. from a security perspective, that's the second. Uh, from a security perspective, you can enable uh, uh, integration with Azure Key Vault, and you can encrypt your data uh, using Azure Key Vault uh, secrets. And uh, this is this is transparent this data encryption, right? So in other words, there's a there's an exactly. easy button or an easy yeah. path to onboard uh, uh, transparent data encryption, bringing your own key, and that key being stored in Azure Key Vault. Exactly. And, and one thing I want to call out, the automated patching piece, to me, just becomes more and more important, right? Given the recent announcement that Unfortunately, and it can happen to anybody, <clears throat> unfortunately, FireEye has been obviously front and center mm -hmm. in the news as having been breached by what they think has been a state-sponsored, you know, cyber uh, group yeah. attack. Yeah. Uh, we can't we can't emphasize security enough. You know, this and, and frankly, it's hard enough to do at scale anyway, but to be able to have automated patching, that's that to me is just that in and of itself makes me want to click that button. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I feel that's probably going to be the most favorite, uh, you know, feature that the customers get out of this uh, agent right? is automatic, automatic patching. And the other one is the boost time. Uh, like uh, the third uh, advantage is automatic uh, backups. Oh, so right. You don't have to kind of set up your own schedule. So automatically, you can back all your SQL Server data onto Azure Blob Storage. Yeah. So that's also an added benefit. Yeah. And totally. finally, as yeah, yeah, and finally, fourth, uh, you know, as I mentioned, you know, it's easier to manage all your SQL servers in one uh, pane of glass. So, yep. So, are you guys ready to see a demo? Yes, we would love demos. This uh, the the new format all of the right. show is all about demos. <laughs> We're so glad you have one. Let's do it. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I wanted to first quickly show you where you can see that button. So, what I'm showing right now is the Azure portal. So, once you log into your Azure portal on the search bar on the top, you can search for SQL virtual machines and once you go to SQL virtual machines blade then you'll see the button right on top there called it's called automatic SQL server VM registration so once you click this button you'll see a dialog box pop up and you can select which subscription you want to scan and accept to the EULA agreement and once you click yes a process is set in motion by which uh, We'll look at all your Azure VMs. Uh, just look at the registry, whether to see whether the SQL Server is installed or not. And if we find that the SQL Server is installed on the VM, we'll go ahead and install the um, extension. And this is at no cost to the customer. So all this scanning is taken <laughs> hey, care of. Hey, you, you blew our, you blew our uh, traditional back and forth. Let's <laughs> just say, how say much is this, how much hey, how much is this going to yeah, cost us, Abe? <laughs> yeah, what I meant was the scanning uh, infrastructure. There is some right. compute involved and yeah. going and looking. So that is, and of course, you brought up the point of how much is this extension really cost? The extension itself is also free. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so it's uh, basically to make sure, you know, all the customers have the same kind of advantages from SQL servers on VMs as yeah. they get uh, 
from Azure Pass Service. So I'm going to cancel out this dialogue. So, so before we um, leave the screen here, I just want to sort of acknowledge something here. Essentially, what we're doing here is by adding the SQL extension, we are making SQL Server IaaS servers a first party um, managed right. service. So, in other words, we have a new category of resources, sort of. And the resource category is SQL Virtual Machines. And these are VMs that have SQL, that have this extension installed. And because they have the extension installed, there's new capabilities in the Azure portal. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yes, 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 exactly. Great segue. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show you a VM uh, that has the SQL Server installed on it. So what I'm showing is the VM blade that you would get in Azure portal to look at yep. all the free settings of the VM. And on the left, you'll see something called extensions. And once you click on that, you will see that the SQL IaaS mm -hmm. extension is installed on this VM. And with that, once you install that uh, extension, you'll also see this extra menu item show up, which is called the SQL Server configuration. Mm -hmm. So once that shows up, you can click on that and go to manage SQL virtual machine. So SQL, so basically it's allowing you to manage the SQL server installed on right. the VM, right. right from the VM blade. Right. So once you go to the SQL virtual machine blade, you'll notice that there are like the six extra features that are enabled, mm -hmm. uh, license type, um, automated patching, storage configuration, key vault integration, automated backups, all those new features are enabled. Um, so I can go click around to show you like how the license type looks like. So once I click uh, configure on the left here, so that's where that'll take you to the SQL Server licensing uh, page and you can notice that you can switch between pay as you go or hybrid benefit, HADR, you know, right from yeah, here. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I just want to say something right here. I, as a SQL DBA, <laughs> Years ago, back when we used <laughs> recovering, back when we went, back when we used stone tablets and chisels to keep track of which edition each SQL Server was, this was so much work just to know which edition yeah. was on each server, and like um, going back and auditing that was so much work. Uh, I just like I can't even just like it seems so simple, but I'm just I know that even just being able to know what edition is installed on the SQL servers is a huge value. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Yeah, as you mentioned, yeah, you can click on the dropdown of editions and change, you know, um, wow. like which edition is running. So uh, that's a big advantage. And also you can uh, select kind of storage yeah. and, uh, it, and extend the it drives. Really, it really elevates some of the SQL specific information all the way up to the portal. Like it says, data, log, and TempDB files. You can actually look yep. at them and see where they are and see how full they are. Yep, yep. So one thing I would say is if anybody from the product group is listening, <laughs> I would love to see the easy button at the enterprise oh, level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go into the EA portal or- Or a management um, group. Wherever you've got- or management group at the management group level, I suspect you could probably do something with blueprints and policies mm -hmm. to say, hey, if we're deploying a SQL Server machine and it doesn't have the SQL agent installed, Please do it. the policy says deploy if mm -hmm. not exist kind mm -hmm. of thing. But I would just love to see an easy button at the EA portal level that says click here and boom, always every subscription that you have is now registered. Yeah. That would be so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Th yeah. Thanks for calling that out. Yeah. For now, this button is at subscription level. So yeah, and I'm sure there's reasons why. I totally understand. <laughs> yep. There's certain areas of control that people don't want to relinquish, but <laughs> but you know, it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing we've learned about Rick. It's all about Rick. Yeah. It's all about. Me. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah, and uh, the security, we already talked about this. You can integrate uh, Key Vault mm -hmm. uh, and enable the transparent data mm -hmm. encryption and patching. Oh, I, hold on. I up, saw something you know, interesting there. So you can yeah. go back to security and you can see here that SQL Server authentication, SQL authentication is enabled on this server or that it isn't, you know, because sometimes you can turn off SQL authentication uh, and just yeah, have Windows authentication right. or whatever. And and yep. and I and I don't know about you, Mark, but I would say please turn it off. No. <laughs> if if you have any if you have any option at all to use um, something other than passing you know usernames and passwords mm -hmm. in your connection string, please do. Yep, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Great. And uh, yeah, patching you can set up when you want the patching to mm -hmm. happen. And uh, so enable, so yeah. not only can you set up patching, but you can tell it when to do yeah. it. Exactly. Wow. Scheduled. Yeah. 
Oh, that's like, hey, come in and come and make my bed, but don't make it until after ten because I might want to sleep till nine thirty. I mean, literally, this is I like love the it. coolest thing since sliced I love bread. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, and finally, uh, the backups. Uh, you can set up the backup mm -hmm. and set up the storage account where you want all the backups to be set yeah. up, and also encryption of the backups. All those can be set up from the portal yeah. itself. Yeah. Oh, that's These fantastic. And and that you know that's a really important call out. The encrypted backups, right? Um, I think, unfortunately, and, and I think we do it by default in, you know, a ton of cases, but I think that's one thing that sometimes people gloss over is that it, it, do, 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 everything's encrypted and then boom, they've got their backups, which are probably a TDE encrypted or whatever, but they might still be sitting out there unencrypted. And, and I think, you know, that could potentially become a single point of failure, right? Yep. Yep. yep absolutely. Yep. yep. And just a little added information about this uh, process. Uh, it takes about 24 hours once you click the button uh, to go through all the VMs. Oh, okay. So within 24 to 48 hours, all your VMs, which have SQL Server, should show up under your SQL virtual machines, and then you can start managing them. Great. So, very that's cool. That's great. <clears throat> yeah, that's super cool. Any, awesome. Anything else that you get from installing the uh, agent? Or have we covered it all? Uh, I think we covered it all. So. Great. Um, yeah, if you have a lot of VMs with SQL servers, go ahead and click this button or talk to your uh, Microsoft uh, Cloud Solution Architect. Yeah. yeah. If somebody wanted to talk to their Cloud Solution Architect, Abe, and it happened to be you, how would they get a hold of you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can email me at abraham.pabati at gmail.com or search me on LinkedIn at Abe Pabati, yeah. uh, Microsoft uh, Cloud Solution Architect. Yeah, that's right. Or, of course, yeah. instead of Gmail, they would probably want to get you as a cloud solution architect for Microsoft at say. <laughs> yeah, it, it, my they, they can actually email me at abraham.pabati at microsoft.com yeah. too. There, there we go. go. <laughs> and you can put it on the, uh, uh, the, the notes of this podcast. Yeah, sure. I, I know my last name is yeah. kind of complicated. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all yeah. good. And uh, Rick, if people want to catch you after the show, where can they catch you? Uh, per my usual, you can reach me at Rick, W-E-Y, at Microsoft.com. Or, of course, we always monitor the Twitter feed um, at Azure Flash News. Don't don't hesitate to reach mm -hmm. out. Um, and we're always we're always keeping an eye yeah, on great. it. And Mark? Yep. Yeah, everybody, you can catch me at my Microsoft email, mgarner at Microsoft.com, or on Twitter at mgarner. Either one is fine. Awesome. And, uh, well, I just want to say one last thing. Thank you so much, Abe, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Yeah, We've learned a lot you, about the SQL IaaS extension and all the reasons why everybody ought to just go and turn it on right now. So thank you yep. for that. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Thanks for having yep. me. It was fun. Thanks. Very good. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we hope uh, as an audience you enjoyed kind of this, this uh, we'll call it this transition window. We still have a few kinks to work out, but uh, hopefully the newer format is something that uh, people will uh, um, respond to and appreciate. If you like it, let us know. Um, please, by all means. Um, if you don't like it, don't. No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say don't let it. No, if you don't like it and if there's something you'd like to see, please let us know. We are absolutely open to feedback. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we're changing the format is um, we've seen feedback that tells us that this is something that interests people yeah. to see things like yeah. guests like Abe and, and demos and stuff. Yeah. So please, please, please share your thoughts with us. We love we love feedback. And, uh, and, yeah. and one thing I already know is that if you guys are watching on YouTube, nearly all of you are not subscribed to this uh, channel. It's usually about, uh, it's usually about 75 percent are not subscribers. So if shame. you're watching and you're not a subscriber, <laughs> please hit that subscribe button. We really, really appreciate this, and also hit the like button to vote up our video. It helps us get a little bit more um, visibility on YouTube. So thanks everybody for that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and thanks again for uh, tuning in, taking the time to uh, listen and watch and get words of wisdom from guests like Abe. Um, we always appreciate folks. Um, uh, that you're the reason we're here. So thank you so much for your support. Um, and as usual, we look time to, uh, look forward to chatting with you. Um, I won't say same time, mm -hmm. but I will say same place. Right. Um, but until then, keep your hands on your, your fingers on your sanitized keyboard and your masked face and your head up in the clouds. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>